After we finish, you can sit down. You don't have to keep standing. Or you can if you want to. <clears throat> Restore my spirit, Lord, I need restored. My heart is weary, please help me, dear Lord. I stand in need of more strength from your word. Renew my love, rebuild my faith, oh, restore my soul. Revive the fire, Lord, deep in my soul. Would you please stir my desire to work in your fold? Light in my heart, dear God, your zeal grown cold. Renew my love, rebuild my faith, or oh, restore my soul. Renew my courage, Lord, it needs restored. Don't you know that my cup is empty? Refill it, dear Lord. We place all doubts and fear with faith so bold. Renew my love, rebuild my faith, or oh, restore my soul. Renew my love, rebuild my faith, or oh, restore my soul. You may be seated. I thought since I saw so many hats and even some Western hats, that was an appropriate greeting. <laughs> Greet one another with a holy howdy. That's in the Bible someplace. We're glad you're here. We have a uh, special guest today. I'm, I'm not going to name them, but uh, probably more than I know. But uh, one person said they came because they felt like they'd be closer to their dad, who they recently lost. And, and we have a, a couple here who is camping locally, and they live in the Phoenix area. He's a preacher, and, and he said they can't do this there because they can't do this outside thing there. It's a little bit too hot. Uh, it's a dry heat, but it's 110 or something like that. So we're glad to be able to do this, uh, at least for now. You heard about the family, didn't you, whose children one time all begged for a hamster for a pet? And they all promised, you know how they do, very fervently that, uh, that they would all take care of it. Mom finally gave in, they got one, and they named him Danny. Well, two months later, Mom found herself responsible for all the cleaning and and the feeding of this little creature and so as she had threatened she found a prospective new home for Danny. The children took the news of, of Danny's imminent departure quite well though uh, one of them remarked he's been around here a long time we'll miss him. Mom replied yes but he's too much work for one person and since I'm that one person I say he goes. Another child said, well, maybe if he wouldn't eat so much and wouldn't be so messy, we could keep him. But, but mom was firm. She said, it's time to take Danny to his new home now. Go get his cage. And then with one voice and in tearful outrage, all the children shouted, Danny, we thought you said daddy. <laughs> Well, sometimes it's like that for us dads, right? No respect. We wish you a happy Father's Day, fathers. I'd like to share a word with dads this morning. Actually, I, I'm, I'm just preaching to Sean. Where's Sean? Sean's uh, going to be a dad here before long, so this is just for you. Oh, thank you. Not really, but it is for you too. I hope this will be a challenge and encouragement in your role as a father. I lost my father in 1994, the day before Christmas, and so I'm thinking of him today. And uh, I brought something to show you, a personal thing that is in my office, always over my shoulder as I'm studying, it's just a little thing that somebody put together for me. It has, uh, Dad was a, 
an amateur artist and he liked to do line drawings and paintings and uh, so there's a picture that he drew of a lighthouse and then over on this side is a little piece that he wrote uh, I don't know if he composed it I wouldn't be surprised if he did uh, but it's in his handwriting and it's entitled my prayer it says O Lord as I prepare my mind with your word may your blessings be upon me I pray that I may have a clear mind to study and to apply your teachings to my everyday life may I by my study be able to teach others and to help them realize the riches and truths in your word may I so live as to be an example to others in Jesus dear name amen Alton S Mason so that is a special thing to me and and it's a special spiritual legacy there was a Bible class teacher one time who asked a group of children on Sunday why do you love God and he got a, a variety of answers but the one he liked best was was from a little boy who said I guess it just runs in our family amen that's the way it ought to be that's the way it ought to be and if really if I could encapsulate what I want to say in just a few words that would be it what is our role dads it's to make sure that loving God loving Jesus just runs in our families we've been created in the image of God and we're to faithfully pass on that image to our children by whatever means necessary there is no one-size-fits-all formula for this don't believe anybody that tells you there is there's no one certain way to teach a family to love God and to grow a family in that way I can't give you five sim simple steps you just need to work at it and pray a lot and be genuine in your own personal faith and love them with the love of the Lord and then trust God to supply any lack in you just want to look at one passage for a moment this morning it's in first John chapter 2 the text there is verses 12 through 14 and in that section John explains to his audience part of the reason why he's writing to them the way he does it is by addressing himself to little children then to fathers then to young men so let's, let's read through what he says again first John 2 beginning at verse 12 he says I am writing to you little children because your sins are forgiven for his namesake I am writing to you fathers because you know him who is from the beginning I am writing to you young men because you have overcome the evil one I write to you children because you know the father I write to you fathers because you know him who is from the beginning I write to you young men because you were strong and the word of God abides in you and you have overcome the evil one again the writer John gives some reasons here that he's writing to them uh, this phrase I am writing to you is pretty common in John's writing it occurs throughout chapter 2 multiple times he seems to be interested in explaining why he's writing and here in what we have read he says he's writing to assure them that they are real genuine Christians and that they have a truly secure faith there were some people out there in the community in the church at that time that wanted to cast doubts on the faith and the security of these Christians John would have none of that and so he mentions the fact that they had been forgiven of their sins and that they had overcome the devil and that they knew God and 
that they were strong in the faith and that God's word abided in them. I think John demonstrates here the role of a good spiritual father. That is, he assures his children. He makes sure they are secure in the faith. He reminds them of what God has done for them. And he convinces them of the need and the power of the Word of God in their lives. Now, all of that, of course, implies that he has taught them that he has led them in the process of of coming to Christ and, and of course, that, that he's in a secure spiritual situation with God himself. He cannot assure his children of their faith if he's uncertain of his own. That makes no sense, does it? I want you to especially notice what John says to fathers here. He says it twice to make sure that we don't miss it. It must be important. Both verse 13 and verse 14, he says, I write to you, fathers, because you know him who is from the beginning. So here's a basic characteristic of a good father. He knows God. He knows God. John says it this way, he knows him who is from the beginning. The essence of true spirituality is knowledge of God. And, and we're not just talking about knowing facts and figures and Bible trivia and memorizing pet Bible verses. When the Bible speaks of knowledge of God, it means a faithful relationship with God. Guys, our job is to know God before our families and to help our families know God and to build them up in the faith and to help them be secure spiritually. It, it starts with our example. Do we know God? Is the image of God shining brightly through us is there a real dynamic living relationship going on between us and god you know one thing about children today and i imagine it's always been true they're really good at detecting fake they're experts at diagnosing fake faith. They know the difference. They know what's important to us and what isn't. Can they say of you, Daddy knows God. He may not be perfect, but he has a real relationship with God. I want that as well. If they can say that of us, we are succeeding in what we have been called to do as spiritual fathers. I want to offer just a couple of examples, and then, then the lesson is yours. A guy named Ron Rand wrote a book called For Fathers Who Aren't in Heaven. He has this little portion where he writes, Michael usually takes his family out each week to see a movie or a sports event. When they come home, they make a fire in the fireplace and they pop popcorn. During one of these evenings, little Billy made a real test of himself in the car on the drive home. So he was punished by being sent to sit in his bedroom while the rest of the family had popcorn. After the family had the fire going and the popcorn ready, Michael, the father, went back to Billy's room and said, Billy, you go out with the others. I'll stay here and take your punishment. 
Don't you think little Billy learned a little something about what God was like from his father that night? And one other. There was a, a grown man. He was waiting for surgery in the hospital. He was talking to his father who was there. He said, Dad, I sure hope I can be home for Father's Day. I felt awful years ago when I was 10 because I never gave you a gift that year. The father replied, Son, I remember that Saturday before that Father's Day. I saw you in the store. I watched as you picked up that watch and stuffed it in your pocket. I knew you didn't have any money, and I was sad because I thought you were going to run out of the store without paying. But as soon as you hid that watch, you pulled it back out and put it back. When you stayed outside playing all the next day because you had no present for me, you probably thought I was hurt. You're wrong. When you put that watch back and decided not to break the law, Son, you gave me the best present I ever received. That story reminded me of a statement that the Apostle John makes over in his third letter. Third John chapter 4, John writes this. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children are walking in the truth. No greater joy than to know my children are walking in the truth. Dads today, may we say the same thing. May we be able to say the very same thing. Let's speak to our Father. Holy God, thank you for the day, for giving us this time. You are a great Father. And fathers here are, are seeking to be like you. And we fail. But help us to strive for that genuine relationship with you that can be seen even beyond our failures and can be a real influence. Thank you for all those who support us, for good mothers, for our dads that taught us, and, and the way that we can strengthen and encourage each other in this role. Please bless this time that we've had. We pray that your name has been praised because it certainly deserves it. Thank you for loving us. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Our last song will be When the Roll is Called Up Yonder. When the Roll is Called Up Yonder. After this song, we'll be led in our closing prayer. When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound and time shall be no more And the morning breaks eternal, bright and fair When the saved of earth shall gather over on the other shore And the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there When the roll is called up yonder When the roll is called up yonder When the roll is called up yonder when the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. On that bright and cloudless morning, when the dead in Christ shall rise, and the glory of his resurrection share. When his chosen ones shall gather to their home beyond the skies, and the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll is called up yonder, when the roll 
up yonder when the roll is called up yonder when the roll is called up yonder i'll be there bow with me as we pray. Dear God, our Father in heaven, we thank you for this day and we thank you for the beautiful weather you've given us to gather here this morning to join with one another and to be able to worship you. And we just thank you for giving that us, giving us that ability and for being with us. And we thank you for Mark's lesson. And as we uh, take to what he said today, please help us to go out this week and as fathers to be better examples for our family and to do better at making sure that that loving you does run in our family and we just pray that you please help us to apply that and, and make that a, a thing that that our kids can see each and every day and we just uh, pray that you be with us throughout the week as we go through life and as we run into different situations and circumstances we know that as long as we look upon you and look to you for the strength and the guidance and to follow your will that we will make the best decisions we can and we pray that you please help us to do that and watch over and protect us and it's in jesus name that we pray amen